was the last time that someone hurt you? And all of us here, we have been hurt before. But when was the last time? Was it like uh, yesterday or this morning or five years ago or 10 years ago? The kind of hurt that would affect us is something that we remember, something that caused us uh, you know, to respond in emotion. And so it's easier said than done, which means to say that for me to preach about it is very easy, but for me to actually forgive is going to be very tough. So sometimes you think that we pastors might be able to forgive, but it may not be true uh, because we still have to come to the Lord because forgiveness for the Christian is something supernatural. Jesus said that, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So there is a call for forgiveness, means to forgive. But if you do not forgive others, then their, uh, forgive others their sin, your father will not forgive your sin. Now, I discovered that many Christians, when they, they read this uh, portion, they got very nervous because they are thinking that what happened if, let's say, one minute before I die, all right, and I have a quarrel with my wife and I uh, do not forgive her, all right, then I die. Then I'll go to hell, right? And so in our church, we actually have some people who will come uh, to the altar call for salvation all the time. And I, I will go and say, hey, brother, you have been saved. But he said that, yeah, but because I was involved in some unforgiveness. And so because we don't understand uh, the uh, background of uh, the different aspect of forgiveness. So let's look at it this way. Uh, there are three types of forgiveness. And first one is called redemptive forgiveness. The second one is called restorative forgiveness. And the third one is called relational forgiveness. So in redemptive forgiveness, I think all of us know, if we were to look at the scripture, John 1, and you find that Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, all right, and he began to prophesy about his uh, newborn baby, newborn son. And he said, and you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people, how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sin. So this is called redemptive forgiveness. And this kind of forgiveness has to do with justification, which means that is the work of Christ and Christ alone. Christ died on the cross for us, and then we have received forgiveness. So that's called redemptive forgiveness. So I want you to be assured, all right, that even if you have slight misunderstanding or unforgiveness, uh, but you are being born again, you get to go to heaven. All right? Now let's look at the next forgiveness. It's called restorative forgiveness. So this is in the area of sanctification. After justification, you are going to be sanctified, which means that God loves you as who you were, but he doesn't like your behavior and he he wants you to be transformed, to become like Christ. So he wants to uh, the, the, he, he, he wants to change you. All right. And so in the process of changing, you may still have some of the old habit left. And so you may offend some people or you may be very offensive. So you ask God to forgive you. So when you sin, for example, when you are you know, born again, but you sin against God, your fellowship with God is broken, but your relationship is not, okay? So then the third kind of forgiveness is called relational forgiveness. Now, this is a forgiveness that you give or receive from others. Now, the other two, we are talking about the forgiveness of God, but here you find is that the presence of God is with you when you start to forgive each other in relational interaction. So the Bible says what? Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. 
So we forgive because we have been forgiven. We are the recipient of the forgiveness of God. Therefore, we must always remember that and do not be too sensitive when people start to say bad things about us and then we get too offended and we cannot forgive. Now here again, very sadly, many, many people plus Christian are living in denial. See, when you know the facts and the truth about your own hurt, why are you having this sickness or cancer or whatever? Because nowadays, they, they uh, the scientists or the doctors discovered that even cancer can be caused by bitterness. Yeah, not all, but some of them. So, so you know about why you are sick and why you are always an angry person or why you are a nasty person or hostile person is because of your lack of forgiveness. You know that, but you refuse to acknowledge it. So when you refuse to acknowledge it, you are living in denial. Now, the other way is because maybe the hurt is too deep. And so you're afraid to face the pain uh, because it would intensify the hurt feeling. So that we fully understand. And that you need uh, the pastors or the counselor to come and help you, to counsel you to overcome this pain. And so the two types of denial would be refusing to accept that the hurt is real. Okay. Another one is refusing to accept that the hurt was caused by a misunderstanding. I Means it is not real. It's just a misunderstanding. All right. Or sometimes it can be caused by a false narrative, which means that in your head, you have a narrative. For example, when you are hurting and somebody come and say, good morning, and then you will say, I know you hope I die. You see, because somebody is greeting you, good morning. But in your mind, you translate it to, I know you hope I die. Can you see? Or if let's say the husband, uh, let's say, forget to buy uh, eggs, you know, to, to come home. And then uh, you straight away change and say that you did it on purpose, right? But he said, no, I forgot. No, 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 you did it on purpose. Because why? Because you hate me. You don't like my food. See how the whole narrative start to change. And then it, you, you, you might end up and say, because you don't love me. I want to divorce you. <laughs> you see, from a forgotten tray of egg, it can go to divorce. How come? It's because you refuse to receive the fact that, you know, that it was a misunderstanding, that you have actually misunderstood his intention. He just forgotten, that's all. But you can push it a bit further. So this is the result of a mind that is filled with unforgiveness, filled with bitterness, filled with hatred. So you refuse to accept that the hurt is real. So that is the one. Feeling of resentment and grief, good indicator that something is wrong inside you. If you find that you're always very sad, you're always very angry, you're always very upset, if you, even nothing happened, but then you're always feeling like that, then something is wrong inside you. 
that you have unforgiveness. And then the other one is refusing to accept that it was a misunderstanding, right? So God cannot heal until you admit that you have been deceived by a lie of the devil. Because all the narrative, the negative ones coming to you come from the devil. It never come from you, uh, right? But because you have been affected by the whisper of the devil, and then you start to accuse people, and then you start to have a lot of negative, ne uh, all the stories and narratives in your mind, all right? And that's why you become very negative. So after the initial offense, you know what's going to happen? The pain inside would be continual with self-inflicted wounds. Because when you create a narrative, that narrative will spin off, off the tangent. And you spin off to something really, really dark and really, really stinky and smelly. And even you can't stand it. All right? And so this is what we call self-inflicted wounds. So sometimes for a simple, simple event, something that happened, all right? And because you do not interpret it uh, accurately and by the grace of God, then you become a judgmental person, you become very angry, and you think that everybody hates you, but it is a matter of interpretation. So offenses come one brick at a time. So in a marriage, it's always like that. You know, one misunderstanding, two misunderstanding. So every misunderstanding without, you know, without the desire to seek for the truth, then what happened is that it is one brick at a time. So offenses come one brick at a time and slowly it built a wall between you and your spouse or a wall between you and your sibling, a wall between you and your parents, a wall between you and your friends. It's a, a brick at a time. All right? Because you do not seek God to give you the, the truth and the reality of life. give you this very important aspect here is the commandment of freedom and you know this commandment it says love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength now why did the Lord say that because I can assure you something is that if you do not love God with everything that you have you will find it very difficult to love your neighbors all right because the second one is Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, it's going to be very, very tough to love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, you love yourself. But to love your neighbor as yourself is an impossible task. Right? It starts with loving God. And Jesus said there is no commandment greater than these. So, Jesus also said, love your enemies. He said, love your neighbor and love your enemies. You know why? Because oftentimes they are the same people. People who live next to you. They, they are not your friends. They become your enemy. So it's, it's very important for you to realize that this 
is a very dangerous notion. So let me go very quickly. So when you extend forgiveness to others, you open up yourself, you know, to experiencing God's forgiveness. And so the need to forgive is that now picture Jesus offering to remove those rotten and smelly potato and granting you relief and freedom. So this is an invitation to forgiveness. And so this afternoon, I pray that you take these steps. So take definite steps to forgive. And step number one is recognize your hurt. What you refuse to recognize, you will not change. You see, the Holy Spirit will convict you and bring to your awareness of your sin, the feeling of resentment and bitterness, and you need to forgive. Can you see? So you must understand that no, no matter how long you have been a Christian, but you still need to forgive, even, even among us pastors. Number two is hand over your hurt. Now, we have this uh, video uh, on handing over prayer. If you need it, you can uh, request from Brother Eric, I believe. Yeah, so now be honest with yourself and with God about the depth of your pain. Now, make definite a decision not to keep those hurt, which means that every time somebody, let's say somebody said bad things about me, what I do is that I do not fight that thought. It means I do not try to push it away. When you push that thought away, it will be violent and then you'll be stressed out. So what you do is that when that thought comes, you know, oh, this guy said that I'm stupid. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, that hurt me. So what I do is that I identify it, I recognize it, then I isolate it. Means I put it outside of me, it's not in me, it's I isolate it, then I give you a shape. So let's say it's a round shape and then I give it a color, let's say it's black. So you know the black shape, I release it to the Lord. So that's called handing over prayer. So it's like a balloon. It kind of floats into the presence of the Lord. All right? So this is the definite step that you must take. Hand over your hurt. You cannot. You have no capacity to keep your hurt. Because if you keep your hurt, you will become sick. All right? Not only emotionally or spiritually, but physically you will become sick. Number three is reflect on God's forgiveness. You know why? Because God forgive you, you need to forgive. So meditate on the depth of God's forgiveness towards you. I was a sinner. And even now, if I sin, I come to God and ask God to forgive me. So remember that you have been forgiven by God through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So because he forgave me, therefore I want to forgive. Number four, Forgive until it turns supernatural. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Ask, you know, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sinned against me? Seven times. And Jesus said, No, not seven times, but 70 times seven. So what Peter did was that he was taking what the rabbi taught. The rabbi said that you forgive people three times. All right. And based on the based on the Talmud. All right. In, 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 in there, it says that if a person comes and offend you, you forgive once, twice, third time, fourth time, you have no need to forgive. And so Peter said, you know, I am more gracious. I will forgive seven times. And Jesus said, no, not seven times, but limitless time, not 490 times, but limitless time. All right. Forgive until it turns supernatural because naturally you can only forgive up to let's say seven times but supernaturally which means that with the empowerment of the love of jesus and the holy spirit you can forgive you can forgive and forgive uh, until mercy pour out right yeah uh shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just i had mercy on you so this was about the king all right who forgive uh that man and so then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his debt, his entire debt. Because why? Because the man who received mercy from the king refused to give mercy to the person who owed him money. In fact, he threw the person into prison. The king didn't throw him into prison, but he threw his friend into prison. And so the angry king capture him and throw him into prison. And of course, the king is talking about God. Okay? So sometimes, you know, 
like you are now, if you have bitterness, you are already in prison. You find that you are trapped. Nobody put you there, but because of your action, because of your thought, because of your unforgiveness, you are already in prison. You are in bondage. The word is in bondage. See? So that is what my heavenly father, this is what Jesus said. The king did that, right? You see, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. See? So it's very important that we forgive. Number six is to activate God's gift of forgiveness. Now, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. You see, the grace of God is the grace of forgiveness. Amen? So the grace given to you, and then it is a gift of God. So activate that gift. And so reflecting on God's mercy and grace can inspire and motivate you to extend forgiveness to others. So remember, I, I told you that you must first love God first, then you find that it's easy to forgive. Because when you love God, it's because you know He forgives you and therefore you want to forgive. So gift of mercy, gift of grace, gift of forgiveness, freely you have received, freely you give. And then seven. The offense may traumatize you. You sense a loss of control and power over, over your life. So number seven is that you must reclaim your personal power. This personal power is given to you by God. But you surrender that personal power to somebody. Now, imagine you are sitting at home and you start to think of that somebody who offended you. And you get very angry. You get very stressful. You get migraine headache. Guess what? Who is your God? It's not Jesus Christ. It is that guy. It is the offender. It is that the enemy who, because he now controls you. He controls the temperature of your emotion. He controls your physical well-being. All right. You have lost your personal power. So forgiveness is claiming back that personal power. All right. So when you forgive, you exercise the power and authority of the Lord to overcome. So the offense and the offender have no control over you and you can take time to heal. So the inner hurt takes time to heal. So you come to the Lord and the Lord powers, the Lord's power will heal you. But you need to release the person to the Lord. So if the image of the person comes, you don't push him away. You recognize, you identify, then you isolate him you put him into a balloon, all right? And then this black uh, a balloon and you release him to the Lord. And so the Lord said, vengeance is mine. So what you release to the Lord, if he continues to hurt you, you know what? The Lord is going to hurt him. Because the Lord said, vengeance is mine, but vengeance is not yours. Vengeance is not for us because we can't take it. And so in conclusion, we go back to the commandment of freedom again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. And so, time to forgive. Would you hand over your sack or backpack or smelly, stinking, rotting potato to the Lord? Thank you.